Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this video. I have handpicked some of my favorite planters that I have made on my channel and put them into one awesome video. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hey everyone, I am giving away my favorite Cricut Joy machine this month. So to enter to win, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. So hit that little red subscribe button and let me know you're entered down in the comments below. I'm giving away a Cricut Joy to a new subscriber and a current subscriber. So this first planter I picked up at Dollar Tree. I love how their planters are so inexpensive. So the next item you're gonna need are some wood shims. I buy mine in a pack of like 40 or 50 at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're only a couple of dollars and it's a great way to get some wood pieces. Then I'm going to measure them so that they're the same height as my planter. And then I'm gonna mark each of the wood pieces. Next, I'm going to use my wire cutters to cut them down. So I do a little cut on both sides and then I kind of bend them back and forth to pull them apart. Next, I'm going to sand down the edges, but honestly, they don't have to be perfect because this is kind of a rustic planter that I'm going for. So I decided to use three different stain colors for this project. I had a natural kind of like a medium color and then I used special walnut, which is a darker color. And I'm just going to use a paper towel, wipe on the stain and immediately wipe it off. So this is gonna give me three different color variations to my wood. Next, I'm gonna use hot glue to start adding the wood pieces to the planter. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect. Some of them are gonna overlap a little bit just because it does kind of go in at an angle, the planter does. So don't worry if it's not perfect. I also added some wood beads to the bottom to make it stand up just a little bit. Now, you could add a faux plant or real plant to this, and here is how I styled mine. This year, Dollar Tree came out with these huge planters. I was so excited. I grabbed two of them right away. Now, you really don't have to do much to these because they're so awesome. I went ahead and cut some drainage holes at the bottom. Then I decided to spray paint mine with two coats of a flat black spray paint. So many of the planters right now at Pottery Barn are this black color, and so I wanted to mimic that look. I put mine on my back porch and added in a fern and think it looks just perfect. So this next project you can do with a simple drainage plate. If you do not have one, you can pick one up at Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart. I also grabbed this plant palette called Drop and Grow. So with my drainage plate, I'm gonna drill holes in the bottom just for drainage. Next, I'm going to add in potting soil to the base of the drainage plate. Now with that drop and grow, I'm going to put it across the base and then I'm going to add in additional pieces along the edge so it looks nice and full and lush. And I think this is the perfect centerpiece or interesting little plant to put on a side table and it makes really good use of your drainage plates. When you're looking for planters, do not forget the thrift store. I found this huge basket for only $5, but it was beat up in rough shape, and I knew that I could update it by adding a little bit of paint. I wanted to get that kind of high-end, kind of basket weave look, so I grabbed my flat black spray paint, and I spray painted two coats on the front and back. Black is such a popular color right now, so I love the way this looks. Make sure you just cover it really well and do two coats with the spray paint. You can add in a faux plant or real plant, but really for only $5, I think this planter makes a big statement. Another place I like to look for planters is at the Target dollar spot. I came across this planter for $3 in their dollar spot, and I think it's so cute. 
I'm gonna start by using the kit that they had. It came with the yarn to hold it up. I'm gonna follow the directions in the planter to loop through the ring at the top. Then I'm gonna change it up a little bit. So I grabbed some yarn that I had on hand in my favorite colors, which are blues and greens. I started at the top and I just began to wrap the yarn around the top. Next, I came in with another color. I went with green, and this was just kind of something I was doing on the fly. I didn't really have a plan. I didn't really know how long I was gonna make each of them, but I was just doing it until I thought it looked good. So I added my three colors at the top. Next, I went down and determined where I wanted the planter to sit. Once I determined that, I created some more yarn at the base of that, just to kind of mimic what I did at the top. I didn't do the colors exactly the same. I actually went in a different order, so it didn't look matchy-matchy, but I used all three colors at the base as well. I cut off any excess at the bottom, and then I put my planter in, and here's a look at how it turned out. All right, so now we have to stop at Ikea. You guys know I love Ikea. They have these smaller canvas hangers that I actually turned into a planter. So we picked up three of them. They're really inexpensive, like maybe $1.50. I had also grabbed this throw at Five Below, and I love the little fringe on it. So I'm cutting off the fringe piece. Next, I'm going to cut that fringe piece in half. And what I wanna do is make like little tiny pom-poms. So I'm gonna cut little tiny pom-pom pieces out of this long, piece of fringe. Next, I took those pom-pom pieces. It wasn't really strategic, kind of in a random pattern. Put them around the canvas and I hot glued them on to three of the sides. I thought this was really cute and it ended up matching the canvas really well. Now you could use these to store things in, but I put in three of my favorite succulents from Dollar Tree and put them on my backdrop border and I love the way they look. So this next project is only $2. So I went ahead and grabbed a glass container from Dollar Tree as well as some of their glass beads. This is inspired by something I saw on a high-end website and I'm just going to simply hot glue these beads onto my container. When I got all the beads added on, I really liked the way this looked and almost left it clear, but I decided to take it a step farther and I spray painted it with two coats of white spray paint. And then when I was done doing that, I added in a succulent. You guys are going to have to let me know in the comments. Do you prefer it clear or do you like the white? So I grabbed this clear container from Walmart for $2.97. I also found this white juke cord that I thought was really cool. And then I also grabbed an air plant from Walmart. These are a little bit more expensive at $3.47 versus buying them at Dollar Tree, but I think they are well worth it. So nice and they're quite a bit bigger. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to create a wall hanging using this juke cord. So I made eight really long pieces. You wanna make sure that they're really long because once you start tying knots, things start Start to get a little bit smaller. So the worst thing would be to not have enough cord. So take your eight pieces. Next, I'm going to tie them in a knot. Then I'm gonna place that knot on the bottom of my container so it's in the center. Then I'm gonna take two pieces and tie them in a knot so that I end up with four pieces. Next, I'm gonna separate out the four pieces. So I'm gonna take one piece from one of my knot sections and one piece from another and tie those together. What we're doing is we're creating a web effect. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. Now I'm gonna repeat those steps again. I'm gonna take one piece from one of my knots and one piece from the other, tie them together. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to make sure that all of the knots are about the same distance. Then I'm gonna put it back onto my glass container, kind of fix it, make sure the knots are where I want it to be, and then I'm gonna tie it at the top. I'm gonna cut off any excess string at the bottom as well as the top. I'm gonna leave a little bit of fringe. I'm gonna fill it with some rocks from Dollar Tree and add in the air plant. And here's a look at how it turned out. Ooh, ooh, yes, winner, yeah. 
Next, I'm going to make one of my absolute favorite plants and planters. So I picked up a planter at Dollar Tree for just a dollar. Then I went outside and grabbed a stick that was about one inch in diameter. I removed some of the smaller branches at the bottom and I kept a couple at the top because I wanted this to look like a topiary. So I wanted it to be pretty clean on the bottom and then a few branches up top. I grabbed some olive branches from Walmart and I'm gonna start by just cutting off the different branches so that I can put them onto my stick. I'm using my wire cutters. I'll link those down below for you guys, but I love them and use them in so many projects. So next what I did was I grabbed my drill and I'm gonna drill a hole into the stick and then I'm going to place the branches into the stick. Now some of the branches are going to fit in just fine. Some you might need to add some additional hot glue to hold it in place. I wanted the branches to be sticking out on all sides. So I just kind of randomly positioned them. Then I would hold up the stick, see what it looked like and then add in more. Now you want to be really careful whenever you're drilling into the stick because you don't want it to break. That's why I recommend doing at least one inches so that your stick is not going to break whenever you're drilling. So just continue to add branches until you're happy with the fullness. Next, I'm going to place this into the planter that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use some plaster of Paris and I'm gonna mix that with water. I did make the mistake of not filling the drainage hole at the bottom of the planter and all the water came out. So I had to add some hot glue really quick to seal that up. So don't make that same mistake that I did. And you just wanna add in your plaster till it's about halfway up. Next, I'm going to put the stick in there, but I needed something to hold my stick in place so that it could set up overnight. So I just grabbed the first thing I could find, which were these wooden spoons I was using in another project. So I put those around my planter and added in some tape. I came back the next day, removed the painter's tape, and it was solid, everything was good. From there, I went in and decided to touch up some of the paint where I had cut off the branches. So I used the color Elephant, and I also used a white color just to kind of cover up those knots. I also wiped off the leaves because when I was drilling into the stick, I had a lot of dust and everything. And then I came in with my hot glue gun and just added in a few additional olives and branches to kind of fill everything out. The base, I added in some rocks from Dollar Tree. And here's a look at the finished olive tree. All right, so here's another option for this flower and gardens planter that you can get at Dollar Tree. So take it outside, do two coats of spray paint. I'm using a white spray paint. Next, I'm gonna grab my favorite macrame cord off of Amazon, I'll link it below. You guys, my shop is listed down below. You can go there for all my favorite craft supplies, check out everything that are in my videos. I'm gonna start by lacing it around the handles, then I'm gonna come in and start doing it on the top layer. Now, when I'm doing projects like this, I kind of just play it by ear. So I went down as far as I thought it looked nice, and then I cut it off and left a little bit of the white at the bottom. You could dress this up with any planter that you have. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this video with all these planters. I thought it was fun to put them all together for you. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I post two DIYs each week. And if you missed our last one, I'll link it for you. And I'll talk to you guys in our next one. Bye.